Hi folks, Mick here. Wandering through the woods in the local woodland. Um, beautiful day it is. Red hot, and I mean red hot. And I thought I'm going to have to get out and enjoy this. Well, there's insects buzzing everywhere. Whole place is just alive. In any case, I've been trying to think or come up with their uh, ideas for videos. Um, so I want to start a series. In fact, two series. Uh, one's going to be trapping, you know, catching wild animals for food and stuff like that. And the other one is going to be wild edibles, wild plants, foraging, what you can find in the woodland and in the countryside that you can eat, and some of the poisonous look likes. So, in this series, we're going to start off with plants, plants that you can eat. So, the world of plants, herbs, foraging. Well, to be honest, it's like a minefield out there, an absolute minefield. You have plants that can give you health benefits, plants that will feed you, give you nutrients. You have plants for medicinal purposes. You have plants that can make you violently ill. And you also have plants that can kill you, literally. So it's a minefield out there. So if you want to get into, you know, identifying plants and which ones you can eat and use for medicinal purposes, things like that, it takes a, quite a bit of studying. It's no good going on the internet and saying, oh, well, this is supposed to be edible. Get pictures of it, what it looks like. Because the internet, believe it or not, is not always correct. You have people putting pictures up saying, oh, I found this herb in the woods uh, and it's edible. You know, that goes on the internet, that goes viral. And then you've got people go walking around looking for this herb. Um, the best advice I can give you is get a good guidebook. Or, even better, if you know somebody who has the knowledge, go out with them. Or you can go out on a course, there's certain places where they do a course, you know. It's no good going out thinking you know what you're looking for, because it can be dangerous. If you pick the wrong, you know, the wrong herb, the wrong edible plant, it could be toxic and, you know. So that's my advice. Get a good book, study, get samples, you know. Cross reference, cross reference, keep on doing that, you know, till you, you're certain you've got, you know, the plant that you're looking for. Um, the other advice is if you're starting out looking for herbs, things like that, and you want to, you know, become an expert on it, stick to see three, three white plants. Just study them three plants. It's no good going out each week and studying one and then, you know, next week studying another one, blah, blah. Because you'll get yourself totally not mixed up. These three plants, study them. Uh, what you can use them for, medi medi can I get the words out? The medicinal purposes. Um, what you can use it, like, cook them with, you know. 
what is what kind of food was it complement? It's things like that, you know. Collect the herb, cook with it. Make sure you have the right herb that you're looking for. Because as I say, it's a minefield when you're out there trying to identify plants that are edible. So in this one, we're going to start off with the most common one and one that can't really be mistaken for any poisonous plants. We're going to start off with the sorrels. So the first one that we're going to be looking for is wood sorrel or Oxalis acetacella. Now its habitat is places like this, shaded woodland. Doesn't matter what type of woodland it is, it could be conifers, um, you know, ferns, deciduous woods, and they love the damp, the damp soil. Now this particular wood soil, it's that it's got that much high fibre in it that you can add it to your salads and it'll help with um, stomach aches, bloating, diarrhea, you know. It'll basically just help your digestive system. I haven't come across any yet, like. Right, I've just spotted some, I think. Yeah. Yeah, some there. Well, as you can see, wood sorrel identified by three love hearted leaves. Long thin stem and a paler underside. Now there's ongoing studies with this plant about its antioxidants and there is efficiently enough evidence that the anti antioxidants in this plant uh, can search out free radicals in your body and effectively eliminate them before those free radicals can attack your cells and turn them cancerous. Now there are no poisonous lookalikes of this wood sorrel, none whatsoever. They have a citrusy apple peel taste. The, the whole plant is edible, leaves, stalk, flowers, and the flowers they both have female and male parts on one plant. Mm. So, making it a herf... Is it a herf if dies? Mm. Now, a soil typically grows two to four inches tall. Flowers are typically white, but you get the, the yellow. Uh, purple and violet ones as well. Now, the sour taste is due to the oxalic acid in it. And you shouldn't eat too much because the silic acid in it stops your body from absorbing calcium. Also, people with kidney problems kidney stones, pregnant women shouldn't eat, really be eating this or not like too much. But believe it or not this year, acetic acid, poisonous, like bad for your body, but acetic acid is in uh, spinach, you know, broccoli, so it doesn't really harm you. 
rhubarb. I like some rhubarb as well. Mm. Their wood soil is jam packed with vitamin C and it was used to treat their um, scurvy. <clears throat> it's also used to treat mouth sores, sore throats, uh, nausea, and your digestive system. It's also a nice complement with fish and uh, certain certain meats. So I think we're going to collect some because we'll be cooking to get wrong with them. So then, the medicinal uses, well it's an expectorant which promotes excretion, helping your sore throat, you know, opening your passageways, your airways, it can treat coughs, it's a stomach kick, stomach, stomach kick which, you know, assists your digestion, it's an anti-scorbutic, having the effect of preventing cu curing scurvy, you know, due to the vitamin C. It's an astringent and cause the the skin cells to constrict, you know, another body, body tissue to help uh, stem bleeding. It's a diuretic causing you to pass urine, which can help a uh, urinary infection to help clear the, your kidneys. It's also an hemagogue, which stimulates the menstrual flow, you know, basically helping with the um, period pains. Mm -hmm. Very, very healthy super herb. So, next one on the list that we're looking for is the common sorrel or Rumix. As a tour, sir. I'll find it. But this one does not grow in woodland. You find it on the sides of roads, hedges, um, meadows, wild fields, places like that. So I know there's a meadow about a quarter of a mile that way. We shall find some there. Alright, just coming into the meadow now folks. Wow. Spotted some already. The leaves have like arrow shaped. Very few veins. And the stalk has ridges in it. You'll have these little shoots of leaves growing off every seven centimetres or so up. Here's another one. If you look, there's one over there, one over there. The whole field's little with it. Now one cup full of this is 106% of vitamin C, which is your recommended daily intake. 
So it contains vitamin C, vitamins A, vitamins B6, iron, calcium, virtually no fat and a small bit of protein. And you can see the shape of that, that arrow, arrow leaf. It also contains uh, beneficial organic compounds. It contains polyphenolic uh, acid, polyphenolic acid, flavonoids and anthocyanins, which all help in your function of your, your body. So it's a super herb. So we're going to collect some of this and use it in our cooking. Now one thing folks about common soil, with the arrow shaped leaves, you can get mixed up with um, lords and ladies. Lords and ladies, it's a highly toxic plant. All I can see here is, if in doubt, don't touch. So we have some fish here, we've got the common sorrel, and the wood sorrel. You'll notice at night these will close up as well, the leaves will fold up on the wood sorrel. Bon Appetit That is delicious Beautiful mm. Can't beat that Well, thanks for watching folks, there'll be another series of uh, plant identification and you know, herbal uses and stuff like that coming up, so I'll see you very soon, remember, don't dream it, get out and live it, see you later.